Hello everybody and welcome to part two of the chess making tutorial series. So I'm going to pick up right where we left off. You need to press control and click on each of the different sprites for the chess pieces and select all of them and then change their filter mode from bilinear to point no filter. So again, if you put them in the scene, you don't get that blurry effect that we've been seeing before. So the next part that we need to do is go back into this assets folder and create a new folder called objects. Because we're actually going to be creating some objects that you can put in your actual scene now. So just open that folder up and select game object and then choose empty. And this is at the top of your Unity uh, browser menu. So we have an empty game object here in our game. The camera hides it, but yeah, it's just right here and it's empty. There's nothing to it. So what we want to do is we want to rename it on this sidebar and just call it chess piece. So we can actually put some real chess pieces into this game. And then we want to add a sprite renderer. This will just simply allow us to be able to show an actual sprite so that this is no longer just an empty sprite object. And in order to do that, we can go back into our sprites asset and we can just drag in, drag in any piece. For example, just the black king. We can drag that in and you take the sprite and you just drag it into this little box right here. That's just how Unity does it for everybody. And if you actually drag this up, you'll be able to see it, but we need to make the Z position negative. Now that's very important because it was just behind the board before we did that. Or you could drag it out to the side so you can see it. But yeah, we now have a actual piece in the game. And in order to uh, make the scale all match up, we're actually going to want to change the X scale to three and also the Y scale to three. So this will make it match with the board because if you remember in part one, we made the board three by three. All right. So next, what we're going to want to do is look in this left menu again and drag the chess piece into our objects folder. So this will create what's called a prefab here. And basically how this works is we want to actually create all of our chess pieces through code and not through the Unity interface. The reason we want to do this is so that we have a lot of control over how these objects are going to work and we need to have references for these objects. Now that might not exactly make sense now, but you should be able to see why later on. Because when you're making a game in Unity, you have a few choices. You can <clears throat> just have your asset or game object in this menu. So that means when you actually press play and load the game, it already exists in there, like this chess piece does right here. Or you can have your asset as sort of a prefab here, and then you can reference it and then create it through code. And the reason you might want to do that is because you might have a game where you have random enemies appearing and something like that. But if you're just using this scene here, you can only place them in one spot. So no matter when I start this game, this piece will always be in the same spot. And now I know that's not really true for chess, but for other games that might be true. So next thing we wanna do is click on the chess piece and actually just delete it for now. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is create another empty game object. And we want to rename this to controller. Now this is going to be a game object that's going to run a bunch of our scripts and code that we create for this game. Because we don't want everything running through the camera or the board, for example. We need to have something that actually creates the different pieces throughout the game. And just to make things look nice, I'm also going to rename the lowercase board, the uppercase board, 
and I'm going to put them in this order because, well, theoretically speaking, our controller is kind of the most important object in our game, and then the main camera, and then the board is just the actual board that you see on the game. Okay, now we want to go back to our main assets folder and create a scripts folder. So when I am saying scripts, what I'm really referring to is code and each of your sort of snippet of code or file of code, that's its own script. So we want to create a new C sharp script. So C sharp is the programming language that we use with Unity. And yeah, don't worry if you've never programmed in this before, but we want to rename this to game. So this is going to be our main sort of game script that we're going to use. And in order to edit this code, we can just double click and Visual Studio should appear for you. And it'll take just a minute to load. So if this doesn't appear for you, there might be some problem and you should look up online how to fix that. I won't go over that right now, but if you're having problems, just write something in the comments below. So I have the script open and as you can see, we have all of this stuff here that probably doesn't make much sense if you're a beginner, but basically all you need to worry about is that we have this start and we have an update. And if we write code inside of here, right when the game starts, the code inside of here would be executed. And every single time the game updates, which is once per frame, then the update function will be called and any code that we write inside of here will also be called. So right away, what we can do is we can just delete this update function. We won't be using it right now. And also, uh, I guess I can just leave that there. So the first thing that we need to do is create above here a new attribute. So this is a variable that we're going to be using in our game. And we want to be able to reference a chess piece. So what this is doing here is this is declaring that there's a game object called a chess piece that exists in this game. And how exactly we're going to use this, I will show you later. But yeah, right now, all you need to know is that Unity will see this, see that it's public and that there's a variable named chess piece and will be able to actually reference our object our chess piece object through the code because what you have to understand is the code and unity itself are sort of two separate things that need to interact with each other and as we go through and make this game you'll see exactly how that works but for now just close out of it make sure you saved it and also i'm going to press Control s here to save everything we have here as well so i'm going to open the controller and we can go back into our scripts and drag over the game script inside of the controller. So when I created that variable there, chess piece, it now also appears here. And that's what I was talking about with how these two interface with each other. So right now it's just empty. When we declared it, we just called it public game object chess piece, but we didn't set it to any value. If I wanted to set it to a value, I could have done chess piece equals just some sort of piece. So yeah, we can actually go back to the objects and you'll be able to see that we can just drag this in right here. So now if we go and play the game, you can still see that nothing happens. That's because inside the controller, we have this game script which connects to this chess piece, which we have over here, but we have not written any code. So nothing's really going to happen other than assigning a variable. So what we want to do is open our script back up and let's actually create the chess piece. So inside this start function here, it's really simple. All we have to do is write instantiate and the chess piece. So this uh, object, the chess piece, will be instantiated. So what that means 
is that it will be created in our scene here that Unity uh, has for us. Now there's a few other variables we're going to need to set up, or parameters I mean. So for example, we also need to include a vector 3 here. And for now we'll just set it to 0, 0, negative 1. And what this means is when we instantiate our chess piece, we have to also give it a location. So our location is going to be 0, 0, and negative 1. Because if you remember, when we uh, dragged our game object into the scene, it was behind the board. So we need it to be in front of the board. And then another thing we need to have here is quaternion.identity. Uh, don't worry about this too much. Sorry that it's uh, hiding everything from me, but what did I do wrong? So yeah, I spelled identity wrong. Okay, that should work. So this just has to do with working in uh, three dimensions and rotations and all that. Even if this is a 2D game, we still have to just account for this. Just any time you're instantiating something and you need to fill this out, you can just put quaternion identity here unless you actually know what you're working on here, which uh, is a little bit more complicated. So again, I'll just review this real, real quick in case you have never worked with this before. So functions, they always have parentheses after them. You can see even start is its own function. And inside this, you can have different parameters. So this can be uh, parameter one, this can be parameter two, and blah, blah, blah. So we have our chess piece as our first parameter because we have to tell it what object we're using. And then the second parameter is the location, and the third parameter is kind of the sort of quaternion or rotation. So as you can see, when I highlight instantiate, it tells you uh, over to the right, down in that little box, that we have the game object original, vector 3 position, and quaternion rotation. So once we have that, press Control S to save and uh, close out of that. And once you go back into your game, you can actually press play now. And look at that. You have a chess piece appearing right there. And you can see it appears in our game menu here. But when we stop playing, it goes away because we're actually creating this through code instead of creating it through the Unity uh, Scene Manager here. So before I end the video, I'm going to increase the size of this just in case you're working with a ro low resolution or something. So yeah, congratulations, you've written your first few lines of code for this project. And hey, if you're new to coding, congratulations on your first few lines of working code here.